I don't know if people are aware of the fact that there were at least two of the people they were mutil like they were mutilated. I don't know what I can say. I don't know what I'm allowed to say. Um, but I can say that they that they were it wasn't it was not like um somebody you know had a butcher knife or anything like that. Like um the wounds were uh, um equivalent to something that was much lar- like huge huge gaping wounds not like, a, like maybe like a machete a, like i'm talking like if you like if you think about being a hunter and it in if you think about a deer and and all that if you can go through that process in your head like it was to that equivalent if not worse like okay. wounds. so it, it was it. not just like a stabbing situation it was really um, like something very sinister. How do you know that? How do you know that? If I yeah, can... you, well, I know, I know from Dylan. I know from Dylan. So he, then she saw... he told me from what then from you... what Hunter knew. From what Hunter knew. What really triggered me to want to reach out is um, that there's all this stuff that was coming up about um, the Linda Lane footage and if it was real or not real. And I know for I I know from what I seen personally that it is real, and yeah. um, there's so much misinformation mm-hmm. and. It's scary. It's really scary because that is scary. Mm-hmm. The, the it is very scary us. because Dude, what I seen, is scary. Yeah. Yeah. What I've seen, that footage is real. The audio, I can't say everything, you know, because I don't know everything. But I can say from what I've seen, the footage is real and it's getting to a point where people are lying back and forth. And I just I thought maybe that I could by speaking that I maybe could give some validity to something. And I guess I didn't think that people maybe not believe me or yeah, we, I got there before 10 o'clock and we, I hung out there. We were playing beer pong. We were playing games. Um, we only left, we left at like a little after one thirty um, to go get more alcohol um, and then we came back, and then I was there. I fell asleep maybe around 3.30. I woke up in the morning. I woke up around maybe about 8.15, the latest maybe 8.30. And I smoked cigarettes, so I went outside to the balcony to smoke a cigarette because we don't smoke in the apartment. And I seen five people outside in the backyard area of the okay. house. There was um there was there was three males and two females. Um one of the males was like very pale and had light colored hair. Um there was a um there was a black male. There was another guy that I did I had never really even seen before that was kind of just like had his hoodie up um i believe i seen dylan out what there was the apartments that i was at there was a balcony and if you go to the right of the balcony mm-hmm. the house is literally like up like next to my shoulder on the right hand side so it's like oh, the, uh, the oh that house 
It's back. literally there. And we had a lot of people oh, there. Okay. Yeah, we were partying just like an average night. Um, we had a lot of people in the apartment. We partied all the time. There was always ruckus that was going on through the neighborhood. You know, uh, for the most part, I never, I never really seen or heard anything that was really strange up until like about 3 a.m. But in the morning, I remember seeing Dylan because I know Dylan, she's taller, so I can kind of pick her out. And I know Emma was there and um, Emma's friend. And there was a guy that was also like, like I said, really pale. I wasn't sure who he was with light colored hair. And there was another guy that had a hoodie on that I couldn't identify. But they were all just literally passing a, a joint around because they would wake up and smoke and they were just all smoking. Like I would have never guessed anything happened at that house when I woke up that morning until I found out later. I didn't leave until like 1.30, but I would have never guessed that anything happened because they were just out smoking like normal, like nothing had happened. Um. Well, at like 3 a.m., a little bit after 3 a.m., this was before I went to bed, Um, there, we were supposed to, in the apartment that I was at the party, we were supposed to go on the balcony to smoke. We were not supposed to like smoke weed or even cigarettes inside but some people didn't listen to um the people that resided at the apartment so they would smoke inside anyway so they would crack uh, like two of the windows like on the right hand side of the apartment and um when they did crack the windows to get the breeze and to get the smoke out like um there was a lot of stuff that went on it like around a little bit after three there was like there were a couple of things that, that I heard that were really disturbing, but um, I was drunk and I just said, like, in my head, I was like, you know what? It's probably, like, it's probably something really stupid and I'm just overanalyzing it, you know? Like, in my head, I didn't think, like, oh, there is something of emergency. When I look back at it now, like, it, 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 ter- it literally tears me up inside because... I'm like, could I have done more? Could I have, like, did I just bypass something, you know? And, but it was like, scream, it was a scream. There was one scream. It was, it literally, like, it it sounded like, like, somebody was being mauled by a bear. Like, it was like. When you heard that? When did you hear that? When did you hear that? This was a little bit after 3 a.m. But I, but the, you know, there's a lot of times that screams go on at parties, like, um, like really for weird reasons, you know. Um, and so in my head, I wanted to just tell myself, okay, well, this is a little weird. But even if I thought it was, you know, something maybe to think about, I'm at a party with a bunch of people, and we were smoking weed, and we were drinking, and. There were people that were doing illegal drugs and you know what I mean? Like I, the, if I would have called the police, I would have gotten everybody at the party in trouble too. I had like so many things weighing in my head. Like if I had done that and even if I did, I have to tell an officer like, Hey, I'm drunk, but I heard this scream. Like, is he even going to believe me? Like I was really backed into a corner. So, but now that I, I think of it, like it bothers me because I remember that scream and it was, it was not a normal scream. It was more, we were playing a game called Two Truths and a Lie and we were playing beer pong too as well. And I had a friend that went on Instagram live. It was like 22 minutes she was on and like 18 of those minutes we were in the apartment, just like our music was blaring, like all that stuff. There was maybe like about two minutes when we were outside and we were recording it. And, um, you know, you can hear something. I don't know if it was something related. You can hear some stuff around three o'clock. We had heard, um, they were trying to find Murphy. They were trying to find the dog, but I remember they were calling for the dog. I don't know if the dog was missing, but I remember they were, there were, yeah, there was like, I don't know if it was Ethan, but somebody was whistling 
a male was whistling for the dog. They were looking for the dog um, at like three in the morning. Was that before or after you heard the, the scream that you said you it heard? It was before the scream. Before. It would have to yeah. be yeah, before. Just whistling. But we knew Murphy because when I would party over there, sometimes Murphy would get out and, you know, and, and we kind of knew the dog just as like, you know, a neighbor dog. So when we would hear stuff like that, we just presumed that because nobody else really had a dog over there. So I have been in contact with Nan Taylor. The, oh, okay. her, her team of people um and i gave her um the, the 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 my friend gave her the instagram the the 22 minutes of that night and i've been in contact with her and everything that i've expressed right now i've expressed to and we haven't really divulged on like getting deeper and deeper into it but i've expressed these things to her and she wants me to um but she, she wants me to actually court? physically go there to where i was and to show like in to show where i was in that time frame and what angle of things that i've seen and i've right. been terrified to do so because i'm worried that somebody's gonna be filming and they're gonna film me and see me she said we could do it at really late at night yeah but you you can um there's so much more that i do know you know and things that have gone on but um it, it's like telling my side i get right. a couple of people that believe me and there's a lot of people that don't and i understand I'm not, I'm not i did i have i have reached out to the proper people how are they not taking you seriously? So you said you have to talk to the FBI too. I have I have talked with anybody and everybody that I can talk to that would hear my story and that could do anything for that. I have spoken. I have I have shown, you know, that I was at the apartment that night. I have shown documentations that I. A was a student there, you know. Um, I have given proof, and despite doing that, they I still don't feel like they have taken me seriously because nothing has happened from that. I mean, they've listened to me, but nobody has like looked at other evidence or anything. They're so, just going with this like Brian situation, you know. Yeah, I know, like, I was somebody that. Um, I did drugs like a lot of my friends did, and there was a lot of things with drugs related in the area, and there was a lot of you know animosity towards all a whole different type of, of stuff that went on with that. So I personally think my just my personal opinion, you know, that it had something to do with um, Kaylee leaving. And I'm not being happy with her leaving because she still had to continue, you know, what they asked her to do in regards to, you know, the drug situation. They were very upset that she was going to leave and, and move away and not be a part of it anymore. That's kind of where I, I think some of it transpired. But that's. So you think she was the? You think she was the target? The initial I, I target? I think they were mad. Yeah, I think they were really mad. They, they found out she was going to be there that night when she, you know, and they were really mad because she was going to be going away and she was a part of helping them, you know, and, and um, aiding in their efforts. And so she was, they, she was really moving away was a big thing for them. But there was a lot of stuff that was going on with the frat and Jack and there was drama. All there's so many different things it could be a possibility, but none of them that ever came to my mind was Brian ever because I never had seen him. As they said, we don't, they said we appreciate leads and stuff, but that they were they kind of already had what they needed and they didn't really need any further information. That's I, crazy. I, yeah, That's their crazy. agenda. And, well, I know people people say like, well, why would you give this information? And honestly, I've been comfortable giving the information because there's so much speculation. 90% of the people don't believe me. 
anyway. Right. Right. Even like, and, and I'm being real when I say this right now, there are so many people that aren't even going to believe me. So that works to my advantage. Even though I seen what I seen, there's a lot of people that will discredit me or say, no, you, you know, you can't say it's because I was intoxicated and all so? that stuff. They, they really kind of threw that out when like I expressed to them, like we were all drunk, you know? A lot of us were high, you know, and I was very honest with them. It it's really hard. It's it really is hard, very... like especially like reading the comments. Like it's really hard to list, like to hear people say these, like say things, and to it, it's really difficult. It's really difficult to, you know, uh, hear people, you know, just think. You know, that I would make something. I don't want to be involved with any of this. I never wanted to be affiliated with any of this. The only reason why I, I reached out for my story was because I, ha I have heard so many different things. And I wanted to be a voice of reason in the sense that I wanted to give somebody a perspective of something that was was actually a substance of what was going on and what I knew and what I had to say to help the people that are trying to help this case. I don't want any recognition. I don't want any attention. I don't I don't care after this if anybody ever contacts me again. I'm not about any of that. I just, you know, I see people's work and how hard they try to work to solve this and um, and I'm like, you know what, if I'm able to tell a little bit of what happened and, and that maybe could be something that could help anybody else you investigate, then I feel like I kind of, I kind of made it right because yeah. I should have maybe called at 3 a.m. when I heard what I heard, but I didn't. So I feel like I'm making it right by doing that, but I don't want any recognition. I don't want any, you know, I don't want any of that.